Hey everyone, Julian here and welcome back to another episode in the Learning Flask series. We're at episode 10 and today we're going to be taking a look at asynchronous requests from the browser to our Flask application. Now we're not going to be using the Ajax API, the uh, XML Ajax API that you may be familiar with. Um, we're going to be using the Fetch API, which is uh, it's not some external library, it's just you know pure JavaScript but it's a much more modern and newer way of making requests from the client up to the server. So let's jump straight in. We've got our application open, we've got a terminal and we've got our uh, app running in the development server. So if we go and flask run, just go ahead and refresh. So we are up and running in the development environment. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new view, which is gonna return a template and we're also going to create another view which handles the uh, JSON object which we're going to post up asynchronously to our application. So let's start out by app root. We're going to create a little guestbook. So guestbook, create the guestbook function and we'll return a render template and that's going to be in public and we'll call it guestbook.html and while I'm here I'm going to app.root slash guestbook slash create entry and this is going to accept a post method so methods equal post because we're going to be posting some JSON data up to this root def, uh, let's call this create entry and for now I'm just going to return a simple string that says thanks. So that's fine, let's go ahead and create our template. So down here in public I'm going to create a new file called guestbook.html and to save time I'm just going to go ahead and copy this index and drop it in there and all it's doing is extending our uh, base template Just change the title to guestbook and in this h1 here we'll also add guestbook let me just change my spacing here format the document and save so now if we come down to our browser and come to guestbook you can see here we get our template being rendered so what do I want to do here so I want to create a couple of inputs just a uh, an input field for a name and a text area field for the message that they want to write so let's go ahead and do that now so we are using the uh, bootstrap library so we're going to be using their classes so we'll first start out I want a div with just a bit of margin on the bottom and I'll explain why shortly so MB3 is going to give us a bit of space. And now let's go ahead and create our form. So form group. And then inside there, I want a label with name. And then I want to create an input element. Uh, the type is text, that's fine. Uh, because it's bootstrap, the class is going to be uh, input control, no, form control, sorry. I'm gonna give this an ID of name and a placeholder, and I'm just gonna put, enter your name, like so. So that's fine for our uh, name input. I then wanna create another form group with another label. Go ahead and delete that. And this is gonna contain the actual message. And we want a text area. I don't need the name attribute, but I do need a class of form control. Again, because we are using bootstrap. Give this an ID of message. Uh, we don't need 10 rows, we can just change up to three. And a placeholder of enter your message so go ahead and hit save we'll also need a button to submit so let's create a button element 
give this the class of uh, btn and btn dash primary and we're going to use this to trigger the function which is then going to grab this data and send a post request up to our server so we'll add an on click handler which is going to be submit um, submit entry that's fine that'll do the job so there we go let's go ahead and see how that looks mm, the button I think I've broken a bit so what have I done here button class btn btn primary oh, we haven't put a message in there so uh, we'll put a message on there just saying leave message so there we go we've got our little form with a button there that's going to trigger a function and we should be getting an error here saying submit entry is not defined because we haven't defined it yet so the next thing I want to do is create our submit entry function so I'm going to create a new block called script let's go ahead and close that block and inside this block is where we're going to write our little bit of JavaScript so um, the reason we're doing this is because if we go ahead to our public template we do have these block script tags declared just before the closing uh, body tag so any JavaScript that we write inside these block script tags is going to be uh, plugged into this block script section here so that's going to work for us very well we can keep all our JavaScript just for this page um, all within the page which is uh, which is really nice it's something I do quite often so Let's start by declaring our function and we called it submit entry. It's not going to take any arguments. All it's going to do is just submit a post and we're going to get the values by the following. So var name equals document dot get element by ID. And the ID we set was name and var uh, message equals document dot get oh, get element by ID and the ID for that was message now I want to create our object so var I'm going to call it entry and an object in JavaScript looks very similar to a Python dictionary name is going to be the value of the name variable so name dot value and message is also going to be message dot value and now just for now I want to make sure our function is working by logging out the entry object here so that will log to the console so let's go ahead and do that now if we uh, make sure we got the console open refresh the page and test message we go ahead and click leave message down in the console here you'll see we are console logging our object so we know that that button is activating the function which is good now the next thing we need to do is actually go ahead and post this JSON data up to our flask root which was at slash guestbook slash create entry so we know we're going to be accepting JSON so what do we want to do well, first things first, you want to make sure you've got um, request imported because we're going to be handling some incoming request data. So go ahead and import that. We're going to be returning a JSON response. So go ahead and uh, import JSONify. And also uh, we're going to be making and well, we're going to be building a response and then sending it. So go ahead and import make response. So get all those things uh, imported and head back down to our uh, create entry route. So like I said, we know we've got a JSON object coming in, so let's save that into a variable and I'm going to call it rec and to access that is request.getjson. So dot get JSON is going to pass the incoming uh, request body and it's going to convert that JSON object into a Python dictionary. So if we were to just go ahead and print our rec for now and let's go ahead and build a simple um, JSON response so 
re e s r e s response that will do uh, make response and to that i'm going to pass jsonify and in parentheses we're just going to create a dictionary saying message and we'll just put json received like so and we'll throw in a status code of 200 now rather than returning thanks we're just going to go ahead and return this response object so that will do for now um, let's head back to our browser well, in fact we need to head back to our uh, guestbook html and add some more to our javascript so using the fetch api that's what you're here for how do we do it so let's go ahead and get rid of this so fetch parentheses fetch takes two arguments a, uh, a url or some kind of endpoint where to uh, post or get some data from and it also takes an init constructor which is just kind of like a uh, an object full of instructions for how fetch should operate so what we will do is um, we're going to use the uh, window origin which we get in javascript which i'll just show you now if we head down to the console here and put window dot origin go ahead and return that I, I hope you guys can see this but we get http 127.0.0.1 uh, colon 5000 so that uh, the window dot origin is essentially going to grab this part of the U, the uh, url or the domain for us so then all we need to do is add the endpoint of where we want to actually uh, post this data to so let's go ahead and do that we we'll use the back ticks for some JavaScript uh, string interpolation and window dot location. And if we go and check our view, it was slash guestbook slash create entry. So go ahead and stick that in there. So that's the URL that is going to be posted to. Next up, we need to create our init constructor. So we'll separate that with a comma go ahead and create a new object and it's just an unnamed object and we will add the following so the method we want to use is post the uh, credentials the credentials are um, we're going to include them and credentials essentially just means any cookies on the page we're going to go ahead and include them they're going to be posted up to the server we're not going to use them but probably will do in the future uh, the body so the body of the actual request which is going to be our um, entry object here so we need to convert that first into a string so we use the json.stringify and pass it our object which is entry uh, cache uh, we don't want any kind of caching so We'll just provide the uh, no cache value and finally headers we need to create some new headers and headers takes an object content type is going to be application slash json like so so that's essentially everything we need to actually construct our uh, fetch request but in fact, let's just go ahead and try that now. Uh, we are returning some JSON, but it's not. Uh, but we're not doing anything with it in our JavaScript. So, go ahead and enter a uh, test message. Go ahead and click Leave Message. Oh, we got a 404. Maybe I made a mistake there. Sorry, guys. I might have made a mistake. It's. Uh, window.origin not window.location because that window.location will give us the uh, complete path so that will include guestbook so if we do uh, window.origin there we go we get 127.0.0.1 port 5000 so that's what we want so I'm going to go ahead and refresh that add a new message test message and if we leave the message and take a look at our console or our terminal, we are printing out that uh, JSON which we passed into a uh, Python dictionary and we're printing that to the terminal. 
So just to uh, recap what we've done there, we've uh, passed that using the getJSON method into a Python dictionary and printed it out to our terminal. Now we are making a response and sending that back to the client. So let's go ahead and deal with that. So fetch um, can be chained with all sorts of different things, but this is a kind of a, a pattern that I've been using, which works quite well. So we're going to use the dot then method and that takes a function um, which takes a response and now we have access to our response inside uh, this function here so it's going to run fetch post the data up and then it's going to do something straight after with the response so what can we put inside our response? Well, let's handle for if the uh, if the HTTP code isn't a 200. So if the response.status is not equal to 200, let's go ahead and do something. We're just going to console log. Um, And then we'll use uh, some string interpolation there and put response.status and maybe separate that with a little colon. Um, and then we're going to just return nothing. So that will kind of stop everything from running. So if the response is, um, if it is 200, we want to do something with our data. So we're going to pass our um, response and turn it into a JSON object again. We can then chain that with the dot then method and a callback function which will take our data and then what we'll do for now is just go ahead and console log the data. So that's pretty much all I want to do for now. I want to catch an error if it's not a uh, if it's not a 200, and if it is a 200, I just want to print some data to the terminal here. So let's go ahead and write a new message. So uh, console log this. Okay, why is that not uh, logging? Maybe I need to reload that. leave message and there we go we get our message there json received which is we put which is what we put in our view here and for example if we want to change that let's just bounce back the original uh, object that we sent up so let's go ahead and replace that with the request and we can just send that as is and it should return us our original message so there we go we are posting up some data and we're receiving something back all asynchronously. We haven't had to reload the page. We haven't been bounced around. It's just all doing it behind the scenes asynchronously. So that's pretty much it for this one. Um, in the next part, we're going to actually build upon this. We're going to create our actual guestbook little mini application. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. If you've got any, uh, any questions, leave them in the comments below. If, uh, if you want to subscribe, feel free to subscribe. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.